Hello everyone, welcome back and this week we'll be planting lots of stuff. We're also making bacon and we're going to bottle the elderflower wine champagne sparkling thing. And we're helping out some friends with fencing. And we also have James and Paul coming over on their bikes from the UK. Uh, they came this time last year, somewhere around there. And James has been here for the olive harvest. Uh, so I thought I'd film them coming in on their bikes. And um, yeah, here they are. So we uh, drank a few beers, ate some pizza, had a thoroughly good evening, and then the guys disappeared the next morning. So in here I've got um, some compost and some chicken poo and I'm going to mix that in with the soil and I'm going to plant my uh, what they call... I'm going to plant melons in here.
How do you like the fork? It's my grandfather's old garden fork. It was a stone fork, so they had little balls on the end of these. But he cut them, cut them off, and sharpened them to points because he liked a big, uh, nice big amount of soil to dig out when he's when he's forking over the ground. The reason I put them in here is because we haven't got enough ground prepared. I need to finish off the raised bed, put ants, put the peanuts in, and then uh, plus it's easier to keep an eye on them here and water them. So. Okay, so we've got uh, given the two piggies that we couldn't catch. We got given one of them by, by our friends, Dave and Julie. Kindly gave us a whole pig. So we have here now has been curing in the fridge some back bacon and some belly bacon. Yeah, uh, using um, just a dry salt method. And what we're going to do now is rinse it off with cold water. Oh, that's that way. Pat that dry. And then slice it up. So it was the whole piece was too big for our slicer, so I've just cut it in half and we'll do half at a time. Oh, hang on. Don't forget to set the slicer. <laughs> I think we'll have nice thick slices as well, like thick slices of bacon. What say you? Yeah. As you can see, these are my thick slices are quite fatty. 
uh, streaky bacon basically. So here we go, obviously you have to uh, quality, you know, quality test all your products. So um, we're just frying off a bit of uh, bacon there to quality test it. Smells like bacon. Mmm, looks like bacon. Let's see if it tastes like bacon. So just a little lunchtime snack. A couple of rushes of bacon, some uh, focaccia from focaccia from the other night. Another leg. What do you think? What's the bacon like? Finding out. It's pretty good, darling. Not too salty. No, it's really good. Wow, cool. Yeah. Like Andrew just said, the bacon is top notch. Mm. So there we go, all sliced up, bagged up into individual portions in cling film and then put into bags to go in the freezer. So we can just pick out, um, you know, a portion of, of bacon, let it thaw out for half an hour and then uh, we've got bacon for breakfast or when lardons for whenever we want them, etc, etc. So on this very windy day, we're at our friend, uh, our neighbour Andreas's house. Uh, to make a pergola to go over the pond bit. I'll show you now. So yes, we have four poles. To go over there. It's just uh, at this level here. Cool. So, we've been doing some welding here, and um, I've got all the frames now cut to length. It's very windy. Just need to weld them on. So there we have it, a little uh, pergola over the uh, lovely bit of water here. And what, um, what Andreas is going to do is put some bamboo over this to make shade underneath, so that would be cool. Obviously the where I've welded it will re-rust and match all the rest. He wants that uh, sort of rusty look. Nice. So that's me all done. Um, off now home to see what Angie's doing in the garden. And you've been planting tomatoes next to peas. Yes. I see. Yes, so these are the idle. I ildis. Ild 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 I'll, I'll put it up on screen the name of these tomatoes, they're but they're very prolific. Super prolific and grow much better than the peas have, which yeah. have been in here for ages. But uh, hey ho. Oh, well done. So they're going in there. I'm going to, once we've finished doing that, I'm going to plant the, the seven zebra green zebra tomatoes in that bit, uh -huh. but that's and the corn's directly. doing okay, or the maize, I should say. Yes, yeah, so I need to weed this. I'm in the process of weeding this at the moment. Uh -huh. um, as you see, I've done one side. So I'll get the other side done. And then, I shall also plant it in there. These are what are called meter beans. So uh -huh. I've just bought them up and they'll go in. I've got 16, 17 of those to put in. Cool. So we've only got a couple of gaps with the runner beans. So obviously I'll put those in with the runner bean gaps and they'll just spread them out. So we'll have a good mixture of beans. So we're just leaving Covia Hospital. And just, just uh, we had a phone call, surprise phone call. And uh, Anne just had a hip score test done. Where she scored over, like 20% over what it should be. Fabulous. Cut. The ground's hard.
you open this? So, unfortunately, this section of video, uh, we've lost all sound for some strange reason. But what I'm trying to explain is that uh, Cindy, on her land, has a big issue with um, some intruders. Uh, it seems that uh, in the big stump in the middle of the pig pen here, there are some what look like to me Asian hornets. So what she's going to do is phone up the necessary authorities and um, yeah, get them to come and check it out and get them removed. But uh, if you can see a few flying around, I had to run away a few times. I didn't catch them very well on video, but they are huge. Mainly, you can see one there. They're mainly black, um, but a little bit of yellow on their bum, if you like. Um, but yeah, they're very uh, dangerous. They're not, you know, their, their sting isn't as just, as, it's just the same as a European hornet. But um, they're invasive species and they're killing lots of bees and things. So, uh, yeah, and you're supposed to notify the authorities if you suspect them and they'll come and check it out. So, yeah, um, hopefully she gets it sorted soon. What are you doing? Oh, no, no. What are you doing? <laughs> What have you done here? This is supposed to be a stream. Hey? So today I'm at Christine uh, from Gomich Farm and here she is and look what I've done for her. And here she is and I've fitted this double glazed door. So yeah, a couple of hours, job done, and hopefully, happy girl. Very happy. There you go. <laughs> I love it. Thank you. It looks incredible. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm pre-loading these little bottles we have. These uh, We bought these over with us from the UK. They're seconds, I think, because the paint comes off the outside, but there you go. That's they're high pressure bottles, so they go up to 3 bar or nearly 45 psi, something like that. So what I'm going to do is put a little bit of sugar in them, just a pinch like that, because only small bottles, yeah? Because uh, the fermentation in the big fermentation vessel has stopped. Uh, so we need, to, we need to start a secondary fermentation. If you do that in a sealed bottle with a with a sealed tight lid, yeah, then that secondary fermentation causes uh, carbon dioxide inside the liquid, which is what makes it fizzy. So, is that science right? I think so. <laughs> I don't know. Just chuck it in and we see what happens. Yeah, it'll be fine. It's, it's always worked before. Yeah. Get the paper because I hate paper on these things. Oh, too much on that one. That'll be extra So from here on, as you can see, for some strange reason, <laughs> uh, maybe too much champagne, but um, all our videos were recorded in slow motion. <laughs> so uh, what I'll do is just um, fast forward over the bottling process, make a quick explanation about, well, basically we just use this siphon thing, uh, left a gap on the bottom like this, siphon it out the big bottle into smaller bottles and then we'll keep them for a couple of weeks uh, and obviously the longer you keep this stuff the better uh, but uh, drinkable after a couple of weeks um, yeah so there we go I'll fast forward from now on and I'll put a bit of music on it I'm sorry I messed it up but uh, these things happen
so after all that we ended up with uh, I think 11 liters or in bottles like this and another 14 liters in the smaller bottles um, so yeah we'll put that into storage and leave that cook away for a couple of weeks basically just to referment uh, secondary fermentation process for a couple of weeks and then it should be lovely then we'll have to pop it into the fridge uh, for consumption Ooh, look what we've got Nick's new pet this is sticky stick insect all I've got to do is teach him to say pieces of eight <laughs> yeah he's lovely let's go right if I can rescue him a minute. I don't know where he came from. So we'll go. No, it's not in focus. So. I'll go and put him out on some foliage. He's waving at the camera. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Mum. So that's our pre compost heat. The chickens turn it all over. And we're in here today because. Because, because, lots of reasons. This nursery is now empty. Uh, because... <laughs> empty because the four little chicks that were in there are all here now. Integrating with the rest of them. And we need that empty because... The story goes on. Well, in here we have a very broody girl don't we hey so because she's gone broody we can put the six eggs we have in the incubator underneath her and trick her into thinking that they're hers quite easily to do really and then that way um, the chicks will hatch out in here we'll probably move her sorry to the nursery uh, and then put the eggs under her in there and then they'll be all separate from everything and she'll be able to look after them without, yep, all, all good. Yeah, so like I said, we'll put her in the nursery with the six eggs and then she can bring them up when they hatch out. Okay guys, so as you saw, little clip just now, I messed up the uh, our, our outro, so here we go again. <laughs> Thanks for watching. No champagne in this one. Oh, we'll pretend. <laughs> Thanks for liking. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for ringing that notification ding, bell. Ding. Don't forget to check that you're subscribed. And um, it's been great fun. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye. So since I've been up with Andreas, uh, I've now come home. And like I said, I'll show you what Andrew's been doing. And what have you been doing? Nothing. <laughs> Sitting around drinking gin in the sunshine. I, do. <laughs> I wish. So I've just I've planted a few lettuces that we had in the greenhouse up here. So I'm actually using the vegiga raised bed to plant vegetables. <laughs> so we've got yeah, there's uh, two different types. We've got like a green frilly one and a ready frilly one. Frilly one. Yeah, cool. So that's what. And you've cut. Give all the herbs a haircut. Yes. So we have rosemary, marjoram, uh, oregano, um, oh God. Um, this stuff, um, fennel. fennel, and, and target in there somewhere, or is it dead? No, that died. Yeah, and mm. sage, right there. Oh, haircutted. Yes.